Please notice where you can sit and where we ask you not to sit to respect the rules of the church. There should be signs on the pews. If there are not, then don't worry about it. Wow, they really listen. Shabbat shalom, everybody. And to those who are just coming in, welcome. We're so glad you're here. I'd like to uh, say a special thanks to, um, to Wally and the First Congregational Church. Thank you, Wally, for, for the gracious and immediate hospitality when there are circumstances beyond our control, such as carnivals. <laughs> carnivals are beyond our control. And so it could be that in the midst of our solemn and reflective contemplative prayer this evening, We'll start hearing carnival music coming through the windows. If so, it's an invitation to understand a fact of Jewish history, which is that we are countercultural. We are, by definition, an Am Yoshev Levado, a, a nation in some ways apart. We have always been, as a people, both among the community and also people with our own identity. So this evening, as we prepare for the fast day uh, this weekend of Tisha B'Av, it may feel especially jarring to think about the, the fast in our tradition and the destruction of the temple and then go out and see and smell the funnel cake. And nevertheless, that is a part of the American Jewish story. And isn't it beautiful that we can live in a time where we can do that safely, where we can gather in such a place and have such wonderful relationships with our interfaith community. And for that, I say, Moda Ani, I am so very grateful. We will eventually be outside again, and um, we're hoping also to come to the beach at least once this summer, so stay tuned for all of that. Um, in the meantime, we will begin our service. Some of tonight's um, offerings in the prayer service will not be in this packet, and we'll let you know what is and what isn't, so you're not looking all over the place for it. But as we begin to usher in the light of Shabbat, I'd like to invite Ellie, with an assist from Stu, to please come up and lead us in the Shabbat candle blessing. O source of light and truth, creator of the eternal law of goodness, help us to find knowledge by which to live. Lead us to take the words we shall speak into, heart, into our hearts and our lives. Bless all who enter this sanctuary in need, all who bring the offerings of their hearts. May our worship lead to us to act as, acts of kindness, peace, and love. Amen.
All right. Thank you, you guys. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Thank you. you got it. I should add that I know it's a hot day out there, sticky today. Everybody should please be comfortable in here. If you need to step outside, that's fine. If you need water, we have some, um, some, some cool water. Hopefully it will stay cool up here. So don't hesitate. If you're feeling faint or anything, we've got the water up here. Luckily, it's better in here than I thought it might be. I think it's actually pretty nice. Yeah. But we want everybody to stay healthy. We'll continue with Kabbalat Shabbat. And we're not actually starting in our prayer booklet. We're starting with a few melodies that Cantor will lead us in. You may, you may know some of the words, you may not, and it's okay if you don't. Tonight, I invite you actually to begin this section of the service if you're feeling adventurous with your eyes closed and let the music wash over you a little bit first. Then you can join in when you're feeling ready and when you're feeling comfortable. There will be a lot of yaylalais and the Hasidic teachers teach us that even those Yai Lalai wordless melodies, those Nigunim, are themselves the most beautiful and the most pure prayers. So I invite everybody, just close your eyes. When you're feeling like the music is sort of in you, you can open them and start to participate. But there's no rush. We'll start with Lechu, or excuse me, with Yadid Nefesh. Yeti nefesh avarachaman mishavdecha eretzonecha yarutzavdecha kemo. Sing out to God a new song, Shir Ladonai Shir Hadash. A medieval commentator, David Kimchi, comments that it's not just singing a new song every time we sit down, but making each song feel new. So this might be a new song or it might be an old song, but the challenge for us is finding how it is different this time on the inside. Shiru Ladonai. Shiru Ladonai, Shiru Ladonai, Oh, 
sing yai dai 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 yan dai 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 to believe this, but as we were singing, I noticed a woman who I'm pretty sure is wearing her, her bridal gown, standing for <laughs> photographs outside. Did you see a two-canter? <laughs> and it couldn't be a better sign that it's time for us to welcome Shabbat, whom the <laughs> mystics in Sfat referred to as a, as a bride. So it could be. Now she's just gone away, but she might come back, and that itself is very Kabbalistic. For those of you who understand what I'm saying. If you don't, don't worry. <laughs> but uh, but we, we will we'll have a chance to turn around and face the entrance to this building and symbolically welcome Shabbat that, 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 the, that the mystics describe as a, a, um, a beloved welcoming his or her beloved as though this were a wedding ceremony every week for Shabbat to feel that love, to feel that special unity for Shabbat. So we're back in our Siddur now, our prayer packet. For Lecha Dodi on page three. <laughs> Please rise and face the entrance. this moment of formal gathering, we can stay standing by the way, at this moment of formal gathering, I'd like to also take a chance to uh, welcome those of us who are joining our digital congregation tonight. 
on Zoom. We're so glad to see you with us. We know that you're not here in person, but you're very much part of our community this evening, and we look forward to seeing you and interacting with you throughout the service. We'll continue then with our call to worship for our whole congregation on the bottom of the page with Baruch Hu. from Wendell Berry. Listen, when despair for the world grows in me and I wake in the night at the least sound in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be, I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water, and I feel above me the day-blind stars waiting for their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world, and I am free. Baruch Ata Adonai Hama'ariv Aravim. We'll read together in the middle of page four. Please join me. Adonai, when you gave us Torah, you revealed your love and compassion for us. Your Torah teachings guide us toward holiness and justice. What greater gift might we receive than the Torah, the heart of our lives? It is in our love of you that we strive to be the holy people we might be. Praise to you, Adonai, who expresses love of Israel through words of Torah. Baruch Ata Adonai, Ohev Amo Yisrael. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Baruch Shem Page five. Vishinantam Livanecha, Vidivartam, Bishiftecha, Abdecha, Ubertecha, Vaderech, Ushochecha, Ubekumecha, Ukshartam Leot, Ayadecha, Vehayuletota for Bene Necha, Uftartam. Alma 
אשר הוצאתי אתכם מארץ מצרים להיות לכם לאלוהים אני אדוני אלוהיכם אדוני אלוהיכם אמת Page 6. Standing on the parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught before ever we stood at Sinai's foot. That wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt. That there's a better place, a promised land. That the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness. That there's no way to get from here to there except by joining hands and marching together. Which is what we celebrate every time we sing Micha Mocha, that joy of marching together toward freedom. Let us raise our voices as one. going to try singing a different melody for Hashki Venu tonight. And so the Hebrew words are at the bottom of the page here, but we're going to sing, I don't think these words are in here, let there be love and understanding among us. And hopefully that thought can marinate as we consider this moment in our country's history, this moment where we feel furthest apart as a country is one that our prayer book is constantly reminding us to try to heal and bridge and feel the love that nevertheless is always among us, within us. I hope that we'll all think of that one place maybe over Shabbat where we could put a little more love, where we could repair something that is a little bit broken. It doesn't have to be fixing society. It can be, to paraphrase Mother Teresa, starting with fixing the world by going home and loving your family. Let there be love and understanding among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter. Oh, 
Baruchata Adonai, Hapore, Sukat Shalom, Alenu, Va'al Kol, Amo Yisrael, Ba'al Yerushalayim. The moment comes where we are confronted with a presence that is greater than ourselves. We sometimes feel like there is nothing but ourselves. This past year has consisted, for many of us, of us doing very little other than staring at ourselves in a computer Zoom screen. But the essential message of religion, if I had to distill it to one thing, is that there is God and I am not. And the encounter with the other in that is the profundity of the human experience. If the language of God per se is untenable or uncomfortable for you, you don't need to use the language of Jewish tradition to feel that sense of something bigger than just you, something greater than just what is inside my head or my body. That is why we come to be together because we know that there are many things and you could all name them that are more, that are profound, that are big, that are mystery with a capital M. This is a moment for us to encounter the mystery. And so we stand. And so we take three steps back as though approaching a great sovereign, reminding ourselves that regardless of who we are and what we've accomplished, we are still a blip in the human history. We're still a small presence before the divine. And so in humility, we rise together, turn to the Amidah on page 7, and share these words together. Adonai sepata tifta ufi agite hivatecha Adonai open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu, Elohei Avotenu ve'imoteinu, Elohei Avraham, Elohei Yitzhak, Elohei Yaakov, Elohei Sarah, Elohei Rivka, Elohei Rachel, Elohei Le. Adol Hagibor Vahanurva El El Yon Gomel Hasadim Tovi Mekone Hakol Bezoher Haste Avot Behimahot Who may be Gula Leaf Nave Nehem Lemma Anshimo Behahaba Melech Oser Humoshia Humagain Baruch Atah Adonai, Magen Avraham, Vezrat Sarah, Atah Gibor Leolam Adonai, Mechaye HaKol Atah Rav Lehoshia, Morbid Hatah, Mechakel Chayim Bechesed, Mechaye So make no flim better of a holding. Who matter us to me? Who make a high memunato? We shine a fire. Me come of a bark of roads. Who made all my Adonai <laughs> Ha 
I'd invite us now into a moment of uh, tefillah talev, the prayer of the heart. Just a time for us to meditate and say whatever it is we need to say privately, silently. You can remain standing and have a seat as soon as you're through. We'll join together with a prayer for peace at the end of our silent prayer. If you read this week's Shofar Blast, you will see that I mentioned the holiday that falls this weekend called Tisha B'Av. Now, if this is your favorite holiday on the Jewish calendar, please raise your hand. Oh, shocking. This fast day is probably, in fact, not anyone's favorite Jewish holiday. I didn't even know it existed until I began attending Jewish summer camp some of the older campers would absent themselves from the rest of the day's activities to fast. Tisha B'Av is a day to commemorate many horrors which, according to tradition or history, occurred in Jewish memory on this day. The destruction of the first and second temples in Jerusalem, the Crusades, the Spanish Inquisition and expulsion, all the way to the liquidation of the Warsaw Ghetto during the Holocaust. Gazing even further back to antiquity, the rabbis in the Talmud explain that even the false report of the 12 scouts who went to go scout out the land of Israel was delivered on Tisha B'Av, the ninth of Av. Some customs associated with this holiday include, as I mentioned, fasting, refraining from joyful activities, and reciting dirges and sor sorrowful poetry. Central to the religious ritual is a recitation of the Book of Lamentations, which tells of the destruction of Jerusalem in particularly vivid and graphic terms. Lamentations, or Eicha, has a special plaintive melody all its own. I'll invite Cantor to come back for a minute, thank you Cantor, to share a few verses. This is how that book sounds. Eicha, yashiva. Ba 
It's your first time hearing that melody. We have five scrolls, five migilot, each corresponding to a Jewish holiday, and Lamentations is the one that corresponds to Tisha B'Av. Cantor just chanted this, the beginning of the book of Lamentations. How lonely sits the city that once was full of people. How like a widow she has become. She that was great among the nations. We're talking, of course, about Jerusalem. She was a princess among the provinces, has become a vassal. She weeps bitterly in the night with tears on her cheeks. Among all of her lovers, she has no one to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They have become her enemies. Judah has gone into exile with suffering and hard servitude. She lives now among the nations and finds no resting place. Her pursuers have overtaken her in the midst of her distress. On top of all of this, in those summers at camp when Tisha B'Av would fall, from time to time, it would sometimes fall on my birthday. That was quite a downer. I will confess that I still find this holiday to be very challenging. In prosperous 21st century America, why should we gather to mourn the destruction of an ancient temple? Why should we feel sad about exile when our exile has become in many ways life-affirming and redemptive. We don't want to rebuild the temple. We have our own temple. Wait, let me start that over again. We do want to rebuild the temple, but it's a different temple. So why should we sing medieval poetry about the horrors of the Crusades? Wouldn't it be better just to forget about all of that? Well, as I grew older, I learned that all of our holidays have something valuable to say. Rabbi Erwin Kula put it this way. He says, we hire all of our Jewish holidays to do something for us. Passover, we hire to remind us of the gifts of freedom. Hanukkah, we hire to remember that Jews maintain our hope even in the darkest times. What then do we hire Tisha B'Av for? Just to feel bad about our past? Well, I'd like to share two of the Jewish values that I believe Tisha B'Av wants to convey to us. Perhaps you will agree, and perhaps you'll think of your own. Reason one, memory. Now, I am not convinced of that commonly cited quip that people who fail to study history are doomed to repeat it. While that may be true, I don't think that simply remembering terrible things causes us to avoid them either. But it is a start. In the Torah, Moses brings down two tablets with the Ten Commandments written on them. And do you remember what happens the first time when he gets to the foot of the mountain? He sees Aaron leading the people in a naughty, naughty party. He takes those commandments he slams them down and they, and they break into smithereens. But what happens to those shattered pieces? According to a midrash, the Israelites actually go and collect them piece by piece and store them in the holy ark, that most sacred representation of God's presence among the Israelites throughout their wanderings in the desert. And when they go to war, it's a physical representation of God's protection. Just think for a moment of the complex symbolism of that midrash. Carrying the broken pieces 
as it were, in the holiest place with us on our journey at all times. The great Israeli author David Grossman says, it hurts to remember, but is even more frightening to forget. And I think he's onto something very Jewish there. The Israelites did not look at those shattered pieces in the ark every single day. They did not live their lives in a constant state of guilt or fear. And in fact, they couldn't open the ark every single day. It was in almost a bank vault. Who was I talking about the pages vault to earlier? Ellie and Stu. It was almost like it was in a bank vault. We're getting Indiana Jones number two reference. You remember what happens at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark? When you open that ark, it is not good. That, that, those pieces, those pieces of the shattered tablet would be there as a reminder, but they wouldn't be facing the Israelites every single day. And it's that balance between the historical memory and the present reality that Judaism wants us to navigate in our own reckoning with our past. They remembered, the Israelites did, that the destruction of the past can inform the present and that they always have the freedom to make different choices, to create a new beginning. This is what I referred to in the shofar blast when I talked about the Jewish resilience that has always arisen from destruction because that too is part of our history. Remember, reflect, act. That is the Jewish way. Reason two, spiritual honesty. According to some understandings of the Jewish year, Tisha B'Av is the beginning of the High Holy Day season. I hope I didn't scare anybody too much when I said that. Rabbi Alan Liu explains that the commemoration of destruction tells a spiritual truth that exists on both personal and collective levels. The destruction of the temple, of course, refers to the broken house at the center of the Jewish story. Those of you who know a little Hebrew know the word bayit means house. It also means temple. It's the word that the rabbis use to refer to the temple. So a fallen home becomes symbolic of the exile and spiritual brokenness of the Jewish people and the need for us all to return to home base, as it were, through thoughtful examination of our deeds, repairing what has been broken, that is what we call teshuva, which Rabbi Lou frames as a homecoming, building back the house to our better selves. Seen this way, Tisha B'Av is the first formal invitation to begin teshuva. As we approach the Hebrew month of Elul, it is a daily reminder, a process, that reaches its peak during Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Having started the new year with a clean slate, we are ready then to build ourselves up, continuing the metaphor, at the holiday of Sukkot, when we once again symbolically rebuild the house, if you will, as the sukkah together. This year, whatever your Tisha B'Av practice, and it may be nothing, it may be minimal, or it may be that you at least have a new curiosity of the day, which is the least I can hope to, to achieve tonight, I hope you might pause to reflect on this moment of Jewish time as it intersects with this moment in our time as a country, as a people, as a congregation looking to rebuild our own house. I invite you to consider studying with us at one of the New Cage study sessions that we publicized in the Shofar Blast this week. In just a moment, you're going to hear a song which we might sing together with Cantor. It's about rebuilding the house. It's about rebuilding the world. It's about the chance to create a better world as we rebuild through chesed, through loving kindness. So as we reflect on all those who perished in catastrophes past and present, we look back on the destructions of past and present to remind ourselves of our responsibility to always rebuild the house, no matter what may come. The song is called Olam Chesed Yibaneh, from the Psalms, A World is Built of Loyal Love. Cantor, would you come and lead us in that song? Olam chesed ibane Olam chesed ibane 
so many ways for us to bring chesed into this world, to bring the love that we have for one another into this space, one of which is to, um, to honor all those who are struggling with something right now, who are going through a tough time, who are sick, who are in need of recovery, who are stressed and tried in caring for those who are ill. For all those who are in need of healing, we will offer a Misha Beirach prayer, beginning with our temple members. April D'Amato, Norma Diamond, Karen Flatley, Henry Gettenberg, Carol Gordon, Tom Louie, and Josh Lipschitz, and their loved ones of our congregation, Patty Hayes, Stephen Verdi, Harriet Cohen Haggerty, Jay Fliss, Mickey Bart, Cindy Scher, Bart Young, Andrea Schaffner, Jonathan Kaufman, Jennifer Murphy, Helen Dreyfus, Marina Serrano, Mary Young, Ben Peck, Mark and Martha Potter, Sandy Spector, Gloria Newell, Georgia Jennings, Celeste Hawks, Sabine Meyer, Steve Wasserman, Danita Semple, Joan Sidney, David Char, Amelia Sidney, Amy Fissell, Ellsworth Mathias, Devorah Shlamit, Deborah Poulin, Samuel and Gail Feidelberg, Ira Weiss, Mariel Sheepers, and Betsy Paceris Ross. I would invite us to add any names uh, of those who we are thinking of in this space that we can bring into our prayers. I'll invite those who are joining us remotely on Zoom. If you want, you can type now the name of your loved one, and I'll be able to share it for the community here as well. Start on this side.
We rise now at the conclusion of our service, page 11, Aleinu L'Shabeach. Aleinu L'Shabeach Adon HaKol Latet Gerula Leotze Hebreshit Shelo Asanu Kedoyei HaRatzot Velo Asamanu Kemishpachot HaAdama Shelo Asam Kelkeinu Kahem Begor Aleinu Kechol HaMonam Ma'anachnu Kovim Umishtachabim have a seat. And Karen, where are you? I saw you. You're over there. Karen Goldberg, would you come up please to greet us and offer some announcements? Hello. Hello, everybody. I'm Karen Goldberg, and I currently serve on the Board of Directors as the first Vice President. Warm welcome to all our guests tonight. Tomorrow, please join us for Jewish meditation and mindfulness at 8 a.m., followed by Torah study at 9 a.m., led by Cantor Boyle. The link is in your inbox. Kol Ami is also sponsoring a virtual experience with Holocaust survivor and fashion designer Judith Leiber this coming Thursday at 7 p.m. Please RSVP to the invitation in your inbox if you'd like to attend this presentation. Next Friday, July 23rd, Shabbat services will once again be here on the Madison Green at the First Congregational Church at 6 p.m. Stu Weinzimmer and Jody Ambrosino will be leading with Rabbi Moss while the cantor is away. We recently announced the dates, times, and locations of our major high holiday services. Please print or save that one-page notification you received in your email. More detailed information will follow in the coming weeks. Again, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thanks. Thank you. Shabbat Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. So we're now at the part of the service where perhaps we're remembering someone who was a shining light in our lives who is no longer with us. And so I'd like to share this poem from Rabbi Louis John Aaron. It's called, When Will I Be Myself Again? When will I be myself again? Some Tuesday, perhaps, in the late afternoon, sitting quietly with a cup of tea and a cookie. Or Wednesday, same time or later, you will stir from a nap and see her. You will pick up the phone and call her. You will hear her voice, unexpected advice, and maybe argue, and you will not be frightened, and you will not be sad, and you will not be alone, not alone at all, and your tears will warm you, but not today, and not tomorrow, and not tomorrow's tomorrow, but someday, some Tuesday, late in the afternoon, sitting quietly with a cup of tea and a cookie, and you will be yourself again. I first recognize those who are in the period of Shloshim, seven or 30 days following a loss. If you're here to observe Shloshim, please uh, rise if it's comfortable to do so as I read the name of your loved one. Nancy Spiro, cousin of Jill Lesage, Ruth Loeb Forrest, mother of Susan Forrest. And we also recognize 
uh, the Katanic family. Steve and Francie were thinking of them tonight. They, they lost their mother Lillian uh, just yesterday. For those who have come to observe a yard site, I invite you to please rise as we honor your loved one. Stuart Norman Handelman, Abner Krug, Nettie Dolgo, Morton Silberstein, Ed Steinlauf, Harriet Ringel, Gertrude Myers, Marilyn Schneider, Theodore Lisno, Adele Seligman, Harmon Corey, Beatrice Finns, Saul Rosenberg. And for those who are attending in person, if you'd like to share the name of a loved one who you're remembering at Kaddish time, I'd invite you to do so and please rise. Page 12. Bagala uvizman kariv vimru amen. Yehe shme rabba mivarach le alam uliome maya. Yit barach vish tabach vit paar vit romam vit nase. Vit hadar vit ale vit halal shme de kudsha brihu. Leela min ko bir hatave shirata. Tush behata venechamata. Da amiran be alma vimru amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shmaya. Vechayim aleinu ve'el kol Yisrael v'yimru amen. Ose shalom b'imrumav. Hu ya'ase shalom aleinu ve'el kol Yisrael v'yimru amen. May the source of peace bring comfort and peace into our world and into the hearts of all who are bereaved. Together we say amen. Ose shalom Please have a seat. There's a tradition of even in times of sadness, always ending with an echemta, with some uplift. So we're going to sing a sad song because it is a sad weekend. But then after that, we will bring in the joy and sweetness of Shabbat together with Kiddush. By the waters of Babylon, we laid down our harps there. We sat down and we wept. The words of the psalmist, the pain of exile. This one is around, so we can actually sing it as around, right?
I'd like to offer special gratitude to Cantor Boyle and also to Corey up in the balcony. <laughs> Corey, we appreciate all that you do to make our digital circuits connect so that our community can connect. Thank you so much. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Peri Hagafe Amen Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotam Beratzavo Hanu Beshabar Kodesho Be'avav Ratzam Hinchilanu Zikaron le maase bereishi Ki hu yom tehila le mikra e kodesh Zeh heven tziyat mitzrayim Ki vanu machaita veotanu We're going to sing one more song so that we're going to leave on an up note and uh, I invite you, so we're very excited to greet you and schmooze a little bit after the service. I would suggest if the weather is holding out there, Wally, how's the weather outside? Is it raining? No, it's good? Okay. So I would suggest we actually gather outside where it's beautiful and more open and get that fresh breeze and so we'll invite you after we sing to adjourn that way and we'll follow you out so we can say hello and Shabbat Shalom together. In the meantime. One last chance to sing this one that we did earlier in the service. I have a feeling it's going to be a favorite at TBT.